race is very important for them um, in a number of ways. Uh, on the one hand, they instruct our children at school and we are instructed through the mass media that race is irrelevant, that discriminating on the basis of race is repugnant to civilised values. On the other hand, the same elites endlessly talk about race. They can't get it off their minds. The meaning itself is confused, but we're not meant to talk about it. But how can we obey, how can we be nice, obedient people and obey these uh, politically correct commands if we're not told what race is, actually? Evolutionary biology, Darwinism, however one calls it, was driven out of the social sciences from about 1920 through to the 1980s when it began to trickle back. A war was waged on human nature and the center of conflict was the American university system. Not only that, the elite university system. Uh, communism, Marxism, far leftism was triumphant, had a tremendous momentum and had a utopian side to it. It had a utopian socialist agenda. And the last thing they wanted to hear, these people, was actually there's a relatively fixed human nature, an immovable human nature, because it's genetically based, it's, it's innate. What goes with that is the idea of innate interests. We know most people will discriminate according to personality, to religion, to language, to appearance, to background. People have, and not only people, all species that are gene-based have genetic interests. So it's a, quite a profound statement to say that humans also have genetic interests because it ties us into nature. We're not separate from nature. We are part of nature. We are evolved organisms. What about preferring being around people that are similar in various ways? A universal tendency among human beings, it's a weak background factor to affiliation, to social behaviour, but it's so pervasive that it can build up and have large aggregate effects. Birds of a feather flock together, not only among birds, but among, among humans, between ethnic groups and between races. People who are, who are dissimilar ethnically make up for it by being similar on other variables. This is consistent with Hamilton's theory too of inclusive fitness, because when you form friendships, then you set up reciprocity and you set up weak altruism, which can benefit the other people's genes. But for most of us, most of us, there is a, a weak tendency, but pervasive tendency to want to socialize with people who are of similar ethnicity. You have an ultimate interest in survival in order to reproduce for genetic continuity, a genetic interest that's not conscious, but it still exists. People behave maladaptively. In fact, whole Western societies are behaving maladaptively by allowing themselves to be replaced in the historic territories. Now, if we were slaves to our genes and our genes knew what they were doing, this would be the last thing we would allow. Permanent replacement level immigration is, from an evolutionary perspective, crazy. Race is both completely irrelevant, but also very important. The Cold War, was lost. The West lost the Cold War. Culturally, the prism through which we view reality and, and society has been altered. And we carry that prism around with us. The more educated one is, the more confused one will be about nationality, ethnicity and race.